Hey guys, today we are going to look at a very important key feature of parabolas, solutions to quadratics. So we're going to answer the question, how can I find the solutions to quadratics from graphs and tables? So the solutions to a quadratic function are where the parabola intersects the x-axis and where the y value is zero. That sounds like an x-intercept, right? Well, that is one of the other names that we're going to use for solutions. We have four names for solutions of a quadratic. Solutions is one of them, which is also the x-intercept. We will also call it the zeros and the roots. And you'll see all four of them, so that's something you're just going to have to memorize. Solutions are the same thing as x-intercepts, zeros, and roots. So I could replace solution right here with x-intercept, zeros, or roots. So let's look at the different types of situations we'll have with solutions, x-intercept, zeros, and roots. So the first is two solutions. It's when you have a parabola that is intersecting the x-axis twice. We can also have a situation where the parabola just intersects the x-axis once. And this means that the vertex is sitting on the x-axis, so the vertex is also the solution. And then another situation we'll have is when we do not intersect the x-axis at all. So this should really say no real solutions. In Algebra 2, you'll learn about something called imaginary numbers. And this parabola can have imaginary solutions, but it never intersects the x-axis. So we're not going to have any real solutions there. So let's first do integer solutions, what we're going to do is we're going to graph this and then we'll just identify the solutions from the graph. We'll easily be able to see where the parabola is intersecting the x-axis. So I'm going to use a graphing calculator to do this. I'm going to type this in and I get x squared minus 2x minus 3 and Desmos is lovely and tells me the vertex. It's 1, negative 4, so I'm going to go ahead and plot my vertex at 1, negative 4. And I'm going to look at the table for the other points. And I want 1, negative 4 in the middle of my table, since that's the vertex. And then I'm going to adjust the other values in the table so that the vertex is right in the middle. And then above 1 would be 2 and 3. Okay, now I have the values I want in my table. There's that vertex in the middle. The points surrounding it are 0, negative 3 and 2, negative 3. And then there's my solutions when the y value is 0 at negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. So let's go ahead and graph this parabola. And there are my solutions where they intersect the x-axis, which is verified in the table. Since that's where the y value is 0, so my solutions, I'm going to write them in curly brackets, are x equals negative 1 and 3. Okay, let's look at this second parabola. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to graph this in Desmos, figure out the vertex, and then put the vertex in the middle of my table. So negative x squared minus 10 x minus 25. Okay, so it looks like my vertex is also the solution here since it's sitting on the x-axis at negative 5, 0. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. There's my vertex. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the middle of my table. I want to plot some other points. I don't just want to plot the vertex. So negative 6, and negative 7 are right below that. And then negative 4 and negative 3 are right above that. So there's the points that I want to plot on my graph. Negative 5, 0, I already have that. And then negative 6, negative 1, and negative 4, negative 1 are the next points I want to plot. And then negative 7, negative 4, and negative 3, negative 4. So there's my parabola with its one solution, which is also the vertex of negative 5.
Okay, now I want to identify the x-intercepts of these quadratic functions. So remember, the x-intercept is also where y is 0. So in a table, we're just looking for where y equals 0. So in this first table, there's where y equals 0. So it means the x-intercepts, or my solutions, are negative 3 and negative 1. Okay, and then this next one, it looks like that table we were just looking at with that last graph. The vertex is also the x-intercept. That is the point of reflection. You can see we're reflecting off of that, and it's where the y value is 0. So my x-intercept here is negative 5. Okay. Now we're gonna look at non-integer solutions. So if the solutions are not integers, we're gonna state what two integers the roots lie between. And then non-integer solutions to a quadratic equation can be also found using a graphing calculator. These are the steps for finding it on a TI calculator, on a TI graphing calculator. As you can see, it's a little bit more complicated than Desmos because on Desmos, you can just click the x-intercept and it will tell you what that point is. So we're gonna skip over this part for now. Um, if you want to know how to do it on a TI calculator, those are the steps for it. And I will upload this with the left and the right bound labeled, but we're just gonna use Desmos for this video. So let's look at this one. I want to graph it, and then we will use Desmos to help us identify the solutions. So x squared minus x minus 4. So the vertex is at 0 0.5, negative 4.25. So that is not a whole point. I'm going to look at the table and see if it'll give me some whole points I can plot, which it looks like it does give me some nice ones. I can tell that the vertex is gonna be in between zero and one at 0 0.5, like it had told us, um, since that's kind of where it's reflecting off of. It's reflecting somewhere in between those. So let's go ahead and plot these integer points that they gave us. So zero, negative four, and then 1, negative 4, and then my vertex it had told me it was 0 0.5, negative 4.25, so it's somewhere around there. And then negative 1, negative 2, and 2, negative 2, and then it tells me I have another point at negative 2, 2, which if I'm using reflection, I would also have one at 3, 2, which if you wanted to plug that in, you could see 3, 2. Okay, so there's my parabola. So I can tell that I'm gonna have two solutions here. And in the table and on the graph, I can see that the solutions are gonna be between negative two and negative one. You can see I went from negative to positive there. So one of the solutions is in between negative two and negative one. And then this solution right here is in between three and four, which I can also see in the table, or that's not three and four, sorry, two and three. I can see that in the table because that's where the y value went from negative to positive, so that y value of zero is somewhere in between there, two and three. Okay, I want to get an exact value. So sometimes it's helpful to know what two numbers they're between, but now I want to get the approximate value. Need to retype this, x squared minus x minus four. Okay, and now Desmos will tell me this root right here is negative 1.562. So I'm going to round that to negative 1.56, which makes sense. That's between negative 2 and negative 1. And then this one is 2.562, which makes sense. That's between 2 and 3. I'm going to round that to 2.56. 
All right, let's do the same thing with number five. So I need to graph this negative x squared minus six x minus seven. Okay, so my vertex is a whole point this time at negative three, two. And I'm gonna get the table to plot the other points around it. I want negative three in the middle since that's the vertex, and then negative four and negative five would be right below it, and negative two and negative one right above it. Okay, so negative three, two is my vertex, and then the points around that are negative four, one, and negative two, one, and then negative five, negative two, and negative one, negative two are right around that. So there's my parabola. I can see that I'm gonna have two solutions. This one is in between negative five and negative four. And then this one is in between negative two and negative one. Okay, let's see if I can turn the table off. I'm just gonna retype it in. I'm sure there's a way to just turn the table off, but I clearly don't have it figured out. So negative x squared minus six x minus seven. Okay, and now I can tap the x-intercept. So that first x-intercept is in between negative five and negative four, like I thought, at negative 4.41. And then let's look at the next one. It is in between negative two and negative one, like I thought, at negative 5.86, negative 1.586, so that'll round to negative 1.59. Okay, then the last one, it says, what integers do the roots lie between in the quadratic function shown in the table? So remember the roots are where y equals zero. I do not see where y equals zero in this table, but zero is in between the negative numbers and the positive numbers. So I know that there's gonna be one there between negative five and negative four. And then I also change from negative to positive right here. So I'll have another solution here between negative two and negative one. 